On the news, court grants EFCC's request to detain Adoke for 14 days for investigations. Emir Sanusi finally bows the pressure, accepts appointment as head of Kano Emirates Council. And Congo battles with first Ebola relapse case. Hello and thanks for joining us on News Now on TV 360. A Nigerian high court, a federal high court in Abuja, has granted the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, permission to detain Mohamed Adoke, former Attorney General of the Federation, for 14 days. In an ex parte application, the EFCC asked the court to allow it to detain Adoke beyond the legal 24 hours to enable it to conclude its investigations. The EFCC had in a statement released late on Thursday said Adoke is being probed for alleged abuse of office and money laundering in respect of the granting of the oil prospecting license OPL245 to Shell and ENI. It said preliminary investigations revealed crimes that border on conspiracy, forgery of bank documents, bribery, corruption and money laundering to the tune of over $1.2 billion against Malabu Oil and Gas Limited, Shell Nigeria Ultra Deep, Nigeria Adip Exploration NAE and their officials. This is according to the Anti-Graft Agency, and they say it culminates into criminal charges against Adoke and other persons involved in the granting of the deal. Adoke, who has been away from Nigeria for the past four years, arrived to the country on Thursday following his arrest by international police in Dubai. Emir of Kano, Mohamed Samisi II, has accepted his appointment as chairman of the Kano State Emirates Council of Chiefs. His acceptance follows a two-day ultimatum issued to him by the state governor, Abdullahi Ganduji, to accept or decline the position. Ganduji had in a statement released late on Thursday revealed that he has received petitions asking him to dethrone Samusi if the Emir fails to comply with the new Emirates Council law passed earlier this month. Samusi's acceptance was contained in a letter addressed to the governor and to the office of the Secretary of the State Government, SSG, and signed by his secretary, Abba Yusuf. In the latter, Samisi requested further directives from the governor on how to proceed in the new position. President Muhammadu Buhari has inaugurated the National Action Committee, NAC, for implementation of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. The committee is made up of representatives of ministries and agencies with relevant jurisdiction as well as stakeholder groups from private sector and the civil society. Following the inauguration, President Buhari charged the committee to support ministries, departments and agencies, as well as businesses, to achieve the full benefits of the agreement. He said the goal of job creation is one of the major reasons of the agreement, urging members to report a to submit a report to him by March 2020. President Buhari, in July 2019, approved the establishment of the committee with the mandate to undertake a process of engagement with stakeholders to sensitize them of the opportunities and challenges of the EFCFTA. The Senate has approved the Federal Capital Territory 2020 budget after increasing it by 41 billion naira to bring the total figure to 273.255 billion naira. The budget was approved after a Senate committee presented its final report on the document. President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, also named Senator Smart Adeyemi, as the chairman, Senate Committee on Aviation, to replace Dino Malai, who was earlier in the year sacked by the appeal court. The menace of insecurity calls for a new approach that will be founded on credible intelligence gathering. The budgetary allocation on security to FCT administration is to enable the administration harness the latest technologies for the enhancement of productivity. This will make security agencies in FCT to be more proactive and reasonably predict potential crimes. In this regard, the committees of FCT deliberated and resolved to double the proposed allocation to security in the federal capital territory and its environs. For the year 2020, the proposed FCT budget is a total sum of 232,875,300,000. Three hundred and sixty-five thousand nine hundred and forty-seven naira on the table. In view of the aforementioned, the committees recommended the sum of two hundred and seventy-eight billion 
365 million, 365,947 naira only as FCT statutory budget for 2020. As the State Assembly of the FCT, we have discharged our responsibility. The next thing is for FCT to ensure that it implements the budget. So I will, on behalf of all of us, urge the FCT committee to be steadfast to ensure that what we have passed here is what is implemented. We will work together with the executive arm of government to ensure that we get those revenues that are supposed to fund the, the budget that we have passed. Following the passage of the budget, lawmakers shut down for the year 2019. Lawmakers suspended legislative works on Friday for the Christmas and New Year break. And Sunji Oye reports from Abuja. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy goes the popular saying. Same is for Nigeria lawmakers. Members of the House of Representatives and the Senate have shut down for the year 2019 and will be resuming on January 28, 2020. The break is to allow lawmakers to celebrate the Christmas and New Year with friends, families, and their constituency. We wish uh, everyone here Merry Christmas and a very happy and prosperous New Year. We wish Nigerians a very happy Christmas and prosperous New Year. And we can see the signs that the New Year will be prosperous. Yes, we, we can see the sign. With this... I will put the question, those in favor that this Senate do adjourn till January 28, 2020, say aye. aye. Those again say nay, the eyes have it. It has been a year of misreactions for Nigerians with issues of security, economy, and the 2019 election putting the nation under pressure. But there is something cheering to look forward to next year. For the first time in a long while, Nigeria will be returning to January to December budget cycle. This is good news for the economy as budget implementation will be tracked and execution monitored to measure up with the country's fiscal planning. From the nation's parliament, activities for the year have shut down. Nigerians can now look forward to the year 2020 with hope and enthusiasm for a better nation. From Abuja, Sunji Oye, TV360 News. Meanwhile, the Parliamentary Staff Association, PASAN, have embarked on a protest to uh, protest what they describe as a deliberate attempt by government to render the Public Complaints Commission redundant and ineffective. The body at a media briefing in Abuja decried poor budgetary allocation to it by the government. The Public Complaints Commission is the first anti-corruption agency constitutionally established in 1975 with offices nationwide. Presently, the Public Complaints Commission offices nationwide are comatose, thereby leaving Nigerians seeking administrative and social justice stranded. The Ombudsman is an internationally recognized institution that brings justice to the downtrodden. Therefore, the importance of the Ombudsman all the world over, particularly in Nigeria, can never be overemphasized. The Public Complaints Commission between the year 2015 to 2018 has received a total of 209,745 cases and has resolved a total of 87,461, leaving a total number of 122,284 pending cases. We wish to let you know that for the past years, the Public Complaints Commission has been grossly underfunded. In 2018, the Commission's budget was finally reviewed upwards to 7.4 billion Naira, which to our greatest dismay was not funded. Only about 4.2 billion was released, which is the usual. Since then, staff under the umbrella of the Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria, PASAN, have been making efforts to see that the Public Complaints Commission, the Nigerian Ombudsman, gets adequate funding to discharge her duties. We are not this kind of union that goes to the street carrying placards to the street, but we need, definitely we need a good enabling environment for our members to be able to work. We have a, on our welfare, without this budgetary allocation, how do we get our salaries paid? How do we get our promotions? You understand? We can't get them when there's no budget. This commission is underfunded, for God's sake. 
The Nigeria Air Force NAF says it has destroyed some logistics facilities belonging to the Islamic State of West Africa province, Iswap, in the northern part of Borno State. In a statement issued by the Force spokesperson, Air Commodore Ibikunle Jamala, the operation was made possible following strikes in Bakton by the Air Tax Force. According to him, the strikes were carried out on December 16 at Bakari, an island settlement within the green fringes of the Lake Chad. He explained that the target locations went up in flames due to the impact of the strikes, stressing that the military had set up Operation Rattlesnake to neutralize pre-designated insurgent camps and logistics facilities and provide air support for ground troops. And now to politics, the chairman of the Lagos State Chapter of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Tunde Balogun, says the defection of big shots from opposition parties to the party in the state is a measure of the growing confidence in APC. Balogun was speaking when he formally received defectors from the People's Democratic Party and other opposition parties in the state into the APC. Former Minister of Works, Senator Adishaye Ogunlewe, who had earlier in the year announced his exit from the PDP, and his son, Moe Shere, were among the defectors formerly received into the APC. The prominent politicians in Lagos State coming from PDP to join APC today. I congratulate you. I will mention those who are supposed to be here today. Senator Adishaye Ogunlewe was supposed today. He has declared into APC. In fact, he has APC membership. Car, you see. He's indisposed. He has said he wants to be represented by one of these great men on this table. I wish him a quick recovery. He will come back and join the fold here as an APC member. Let's see what your news now on TV 360 Nigeria. We'll be right back with more stories after this break. So welcome back. It's now time for business with Fidelia Agunta. Hello, Fidelia. Hi, Aneta. Please bring us up to speed with the latest business stories today. Well, Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, says the federal government have started deducting the 614 billion Naira loan facility earlier given to 35 states of the federation. She said this while briefing State House correspondents after the National Executive Council meeting held in Abuja. Adisha Odishoga has more in this report. Members of the National Economic Council are gathered here for the last meeting in 2019. The meeting which had in attendance the 36 state governors, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, and other concerned stakeholders was presided over by the Vice President, Yemi Oshinbajo. During the last meeting, the Council considered the possibility of investing 2 trillion naira out of the contributory pension fund on infrastructure development in the country. The governor of Kebi State, Atiku Bagudu, who reviewed this, says it will be done through Sovereign Investment Authority. Other countries have been using the same mechanism. 
South Africa, Saudi Arabia, and other uh, countries have been using their pension fund and the sovereign wealth authorities' uh, investment process to create a platform in COSIP. So uh, the committee reported and have begun to identify potential road projects and, and sorry, road infrastructure and also other infrastructure in the power sector, in the rail sector that can be used for the, can be funded through this mechanism. On a side, the Minister of Finance, Budgets and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, reviewed that deductions are being made from states for the budget support facilities given by the federal government. Today also we give an update to Council on the repayment process for the budget uh, support facility that is granted to the states. The current situation is that deductions are ongoing and remittances for repayment of this facility are being made to the central bank. The Council also agreed on the need for states to pull resources together and set up a security trust fund in view of huge costs of maintaining security. The Council was generally informed that the security situation in the country has um, tremendously improved and we've seen improved zonal collaboration and meetings um, with the various zones in the country, uh, meaning that among the six zones, we've seen a lot of integration and communication at zonal level um, with amongst the governors and amongst the security operatives at various zones. The governors resolved that the security situation in Nigeria has improved giving credibility to the recent report presented by the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamo, which says over 6,500 criminal suspects have been arrested in the past nine months, significantly cutting crime rates and improving security. Adesha Wadushoga, TV360, Abuja. The Director General of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce, Muda Yusuf, has thrown his weight behind the early passage of the 2020 budget. Lord and President Muhammad Buhari, the DG, however, revealed that the government should ensure it reviews some of its reforms, particularly in the oil sector, to cut down its expenses and increase government revenue. Yusuf also stated that the government should ensure that it provides enabling environments for the private sector to increase their remittance to the federal government. We also need to look at the issues of you know, uh, ensuring some reforms in some key sectors where we spend quite a lot of money. Reform in the oil and gas sector, for instance. The government spends quite a lot importing petroleum products, providing subsidy, providing equalization fund. All these are huge holes in the finances of government. So we're able to plug all these holes. I think the fiscal viability of, of, of the government will be, much, will be much better. Up next is a review of activities on the stock market after this break. was predominantly a negative week for investors at the Nigeria Stock Exchange as the market closed with more loss than gains. Let me break it down to you now. Today's 0.22% drop brings the total loss for the week to 0.65%, which translates to a decline of about 87 billion naira in the overall market value. Now, this is against the 0.63% gain, which sums up to 80 billion naira posted by the market this week. Now, with the exception of the Consumer Goods Index, every other indices on the market closed negative. But despite this, the top losers for today are Consumer Goods Equities. I'm talking about Guinness, uh, Dangote Sugar, and Cadbury Nigeria PLC. The three fell by a combined six naira and 25 cover. And it's a similar trend on the Guinness chart as Nigeria Brewers and Unilever lead the pack of 13 equities that posted gains today. Julius Berger sits on the third spot, closing the week 50 cover higher, while Stambic IBTC ends the day as the fourth biggest gainer, with its value appreciating by 1 naira and 40 cover.
for the week. Now, the total volume of trade today comes in at over 341 million, and that's about 36 million higher than what we saw yesterday, meaning bargain haunters are still very active trying to lock in gains from previous sessions. But with a value closing at 2.33 billion naira, which is about 800 million lower than the 3.1 billion uh, posted on Thursday, it means low and medium cap equities were the most transacted on the market today. Well, let's now move outside Nigeria and see what's happening over there. The FTSE remains retains its winning streak, actually boosted by a weaker pound and a positive mood surrounding the U.S.-China trade deal. It's still the same fate for the Dow Jones, but Nikkei did not fare so well, closing lower for the third consecutive day this week. And that's it from the world of business. It's back to Aneta. Thanks for that update, Fidelia. And in the wider African front, health officials in Eastern Congo have documented the first relapse in the current Ebola epidemic ravaging the country. The World Health Organization confirms that in early December, a survivor in Mabalako, North Kivu province, fell ill with the virus. Again, the WHO added that 11 new cases were confirmed in the past week, all of whom are believed to have caught the virus from the person who relapsed. Over 2,200 deaths have been reported in the Ebola crisis since it broke out in the middle of last year, making it the second worst on record. Despite the development of effective vaccine and treatment, a recent surge in violence by rebel militias near Congo's borders with Uganda and Rwanda has hampered efforts to contain the outbreak. The Nigeria Football Federation, NFF, will present a new contract to Sipi Igu's manager, Gennel Raw, next month, which is a clear five months before his current deal expires. According to the Nigeria Football Federation, NFF, the deal will spell out certain conditions which the German was adhered to to avoid the issues that have dodged the uh, national team and the coach's relationship with the federation. NFF President Amaju Pinnit told John Lissing Benin during the Federation's 75th Annual General Assembly that should Raw decline the new offer, the Federation would swiftly get a new manager. Raw, who became Super Eagles manager in August 2016, qualified Nigeria for the 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia and won bronze at the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations in Egypt. His current deal will expire in June 2020. And that's it on News Now on TV360 Nigeria. Thanks for watching and bye for now.